find that writers either really enjoy writing a story setting or really hate it. Those who hate writing the setting tend to struggle with transitioning from one setting to the next. If you find yourself in that boat, make sure you stick around to learn how to conquer an awesome setting. Hey guys, Noor here, and welcome back to my channel! For those visiting for the first time, hello! I'm the fantasy author of the novel Divinity Falling. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe for weekly writing advice videos. I find that a lot of writers struggle with writing a strong setting. More specifically, writers often don't know how to go from one location to the next without either over-explaining the process of traveling from point A to point B, or under-explaining by changing locations and assuming the reader knows about this change. I admit, I used to be guilty of doing the former. A character would indicate that they need to go somewhere, and suddenly I'd be writing this entire scene of how the character put on clothes, got in a cab, purchased a plane ticket, waited at the airport, and on and on until he reached his destination. It was exhausting, boring, and you guessed it, it was filler. But then in college, I learned how to cut all that filler out and get straight to the point. So here are some tips. When you need to transition from one location to the next, don't do what I used to do by narrating the entire travel process. Instead, simply find a good place to end the scene. Yes, that's right, just end it. Your characters have agreed that they need to go somewhere, they've discussed the plans and all that. Now just wrap the scene up. And when you start the next scene, they're already at the next location. No one cares about what happened in the time between point A and point B. Just cut the boring stuff out. Now, an exception of this is if something really important happens between point A and point B, such as a car accident taking place while they're in the cab on their way to point B, or a character confessing his love to the other character in the cab, also on their way to point B. But in those scenarios, the cab is no longer filler. Instead, it becomes an important setting. In other words, what you really have here is three locations, point A, point B, and point C. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Something else you should implement when transitioning from one setting to the next is telling the reader where they are. Sometimes the setting changes from one scene to the next or one chapter to the next without a character mentioning where they are headed next. For example, a character could go to bed in one scene and in the next chapter, at the start of the next scene, they could be outside in a garden. Now, how will your reader know that your character is hanging out in the garden if you don't say so? For all they know, they're somewhere with grass. Or if you don't describe anything at all, your character might just be in limbo. Who's to say? So it's really important that you remember to mention where the scene takes place. Is it inside or outside? What time of day is it? Who's at the scene? What does the scene look like? Describe the little details and you'll create a big image of the location in your character's mind. For example, you could describe a messy table with its tangled items. You could describe the smell of something that stands out. Those details are more powerful than the layout of the setting. Besides, no one will remember that the kitchen is on the left side of the room and not on the right. Unless that layout detail plays an important role in the story. So that's all I have for you today. If you'd like more information on how to write a time skip in your story, which does tie into transitioning between settings, be sure to click on the card here. I'd love to know, do you usually love writing your story's settings or do you find them annoying to write? Let me know in the comments. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I put out weekly writing advice videos that will take your story to the next level. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media to see what I'm up to from day to day and to chat with me. And before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sarah Frain and Lori B from my shout out tier over on Patreon, as well as all my amazing patrons. Thank you all so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. And remember, Norfolk President.